back to that place of whatever you could say about about the human mind. It's got yeah. the stages of development. Yeah, no, right? okay. clearly, clearly becoming users of words. Yeah. Oh, there's an, all right. There's that, some. I mean, how could you imagine a human being before words and a yeah. human being afterwards? It all, it's almost biblical. Oh, no, there is. I think it was the word. All right. Now, this is the absolute point, and we have to get this across that there are two great steps in the development of cognition. There's the step where you go from being pre-linguistic to being linguistic. Now, there are a lot of smart primates out there, and there are a lot of smart mammals, but they can't talk to each other in the way that humans can talk. Even the bees with their celebrated bee language, it's not much of a language. There's not going to be much poetry or even, uh, even short stories in the bee language. I can guarantee it. They just don't have the apparatus. But that's step number one. You learn how to talk. But step number two, and this doesn't look like it's such a big step, but it turns out to be an exponential increase in power, and that is where you learn not just how to talk, but how to write, how to compose the spoken word into written words, and then how to both preserve and extend the capacity of the written word. And then it turns out, of course, that you do things in writing that you cannot possibly do in speaking. Because uh, spoken language, we don't, for spoken language, we don't have the kind of attention span that would enable us to compose a whole article, much less a whole book or a whole encyclopedia in the course of a single conversation. So the great, the great leap forward to use a, a a, a, a very bad ahead of China's metaphor. The great leap forward here was when we started talking to each other and then jumped forward to writing things to each other. Yeah. The, the, the distinction that we want to make is that writing is something that we can consciously, volitionally, intentionally do. That's right. right. No, but it's also reading true. Speak. To, yeah. Reading has to deal with the same code yeah. unconsciously faster than we yeah. think about it. No, the, the one thing we have to keep emphasizing in all of this, and I haven't said anything about it, is consciousness. You cannot speak without consciousness. You can't write without consciousness. And you can't read without consciousness. We're talking about conscious human forms of intentionality. We're talking about the thoughtful, intentional behavior of human beings. The speech act is above all a conscious, voluntary, intentional act. And the written version of the speech act is simply a much more powerful, potentially much more powerful expression of the same thing. Right. And reading is different. Well, yeah, of course. In reading, this is why I'm such a poor reader. In, re in, in reading, you've got to try to get inside the intentionality of the author. It's not enough to just think, oh boy, it'd be fun if he meant this or it'd be fun if he meant that. You have to try to figure out what the author actually meant. And, and uh, reading is a matter of trying to get behind the coded version that you're presented into the actual thought of the author. Reading, I think, uh, the best is best thought of as a kind of conversation you're having with the author where he does most of the talking. But neither one of you are present, and this is all mediated in a by the text. Bubble yeah. in your mind. By the well, it's it's made possible by the fact that you've got this wonderful written text. And there's a great beauty of the written text, and that is you can close the book and go do something else for a while and then come back to it. Okay. I know that you've got appointments coming in, and then I can talk to you for Well, this is fun. How are we doing? What time is it? Ten after two. All right. Do we have to close? No. I mean, you, but I mean, uh, I, I'm going to start repeating myself in a couple of seconds. But anyway, keep going. Yeah. All right. This. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, the <clears throat> we talked about civilization. We talked about consciousness. The one thing that that I drill a little bit more into there is how our our consciousness has been affected by this technology. Oh yeah. In very profound ways, in terms of our uh, uh, the way that we organize our memory. I mean, yeah. a, a, to an animal. Memory would be that which remembers, puts back yeah. together the yeah. presence of the animal appropriate to the circumstance. That's entirely different than intentional volitional recall, yeah. using words as an index to do it. Yeah, well, it turns out that as far as memory is concerned, we got lots of different kinds of memories. I mean, there's one kind of memory, which is skill memory. You remember how to ride a bicycle. But there's another kind of memory, which is a, a memory of facts and dates and places and, and a memory of uh, uh, narratives and memory of histories. Uh, and all of those things, uh, the, at least the interesting ones for us, require a language and the, and the more elaborate ones require written language. So I, I was saying this earlier, but I want to repeat it, and that is... Language, particularly writ written language, shapes cognition. It makes emotional life 
a human emotional life possible. And as I said earlier, animals don't fall in love in the sense that we do. They have pair bonding and sexual attraction, but they do not have uh, romantic love affairs because to have that, you have to have certain ways of representing it. And and the, the capacity of, uh, of poetry, for example, to articulate and, and not just articulate, but to create forms of human experience that would not exist without the written word. Uh, this is a famous additional capacity that language has. Yeah, it's a, a channel, an environment without which we, we wouldn't have it. We wouldn't have it. No, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Is there anything else in the field of the effect of writing? I mean, see, our sense is, is that, that there's a confusion between the sound system children develop and this code. Yeah. Which is a, uh, requires this faster than thought yeah. disambiguation. Well, there must be some research on that. Oh, there is. Yeah, there is. I don't know it. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you know it better than I this do. This is the places yeah. that we're working. What we're trying yeah. to do is shine different lights on that from yeah. okay. different angles yeah. to show the context of how important this writing system is yeah. in the world, writing in general, yeah. and what a challenge it is, what an artificial and unnatural challenge it is for a certain for developing human beings, yeah. and that's causing this great threshold in our society. Yeah. yeah.